My name is Lee McIntyre, and I'm a research fellow at the Center for Philosophy and History of Science at Boston University. And my most recent book is called On Disinformation, How to Fight for Truth and Protect Democracy. It's really, it's the fourth book in a, a series of books that I had been writing where I'm thinking about the issues of truth and belief and justification and fake news and falsehood and denial and disinformation. And I wanted to write it because I think I finally figured out a key idea that had eluded me in some of the earlier books, which is that a lot of the problem that we're dealing with when we're dealing with a denial, uh, deniers and science denial and other kinds of denial is disinformation. I think that a lot of it comes from disinformation. There's an important distinction to be made between misinformation, which could be a mistake or an accident, and disinformation. Disinformation is when you share false information intentionally. And if you think about it, the person who does that, why would they do that? They do it because there's an interest. Sometimes it's an economic interest or a political interest or an ideological interest. And what that means is that the people who are hearing the disinformation and believing it, they're not just deniers, they're victims. Uh, they're people who are you know, falling prey to these false ideas that somebody else wants them to believe. Now, the point of disinformation is not just to get you to believe a falsehood. It's to get you to make an enemy of the person who doesn't agree with that falsehood. It's to get you to distrust the other people, to not just deny the fact, but to hate the person who uh, agrees with the fact. And we saw some of this during the pandemic. Uh, and it was sort of shocking. Now, the way I think of it is this. There is a pipeline of disinformation. It starts with the creators, and it goes through the amplifiers, and it ends with the believers. And I wrote an earlier book called How to Talk to a Science Denier, which is how you deal with the believers. And I think that was an important book. I still stand by the argument that I made there. But that was really an argument for how to uh, heal the sick. You know, how do you deal with somebody who already believes disinformation? But of course, one of the most important ways to fight disinformation is how to keep people from becoming, you know, sick and the infodemic in the first place. How do you keep them from hearing disinformation? So in this pipeline, you know, from the creators to the amplifiers to the believers, the place to crack down is the amplifiers. Um, disinformation with amplification is really useless. I base this on a couple of different things that have happened in the last few years. One is that the Center for Countering Digital Hate found in 2019 that 65% of the anti-vax propaganda on Twitter was due to 12 people. I mean, that just shows you what a difference it can make when liars have a microphone. We saw it just 48 hours ago from the time that I'm uh, talking to you here in uh, May 2023, which is that CNN just had a live, unedited town hall where they had Trump uh, and he was able to just get all of his disinformation out and kind of bowl over the, uh, the moderator, the questioner. It was all uh, his supporters in the audience. And what CNN really did was give a textbook example of how not to fight disinformation. You don't just let somebody who's sharing disinformation have you know unedited free access to a, a large audience that is uh, a mistake that's not the best way possible to fight disinformation there are better ways there are better strategies uh, there are ways that cnn could have done that um, better than they did uh, i talk about this in my new book where i really spend a lot of time on the idea that it's not just the creators of disinformation it's the people who are the bystanders who don't do anything about it. And unfortunately, you know, you've got social media, you've got partisan media, they have their own interests. They can be amplifying it, you know, on purpose or not. But you can also have mainstream media who, again, have their own interests. And maybe they don't think of themselves, uh, you know, in an evil way, but they're really doing a terrible thing when they're allowing disinformation to be spread uh, unfiltered, unedited, with no pushback.